Last week I showed you how to paint a flat wash in watercolour. Today I want to show you the next step, so I'm going to demonstrate how to paint a graded wash a few different ways. Last week I said there were three main washes that you need to learn how to apply to your paper. There's the flat wash, the graded wash, and the variegated wash. I walked you through the flat wash last week. Today I'm going to demonstrate the graded wash. Now the flat wash is consistent in tone and colour from top to bottom, whereas a graded wash is one where the colour is darker at the top and it gradually gets lighter as you work your way down the paper or it can work the other way where it's darker at the bottom and it gradually gets lighter as it works its way up the paper. You might use a graded wash if you were painting a sky because skies are darker at the top than they are at the bottom. Now a graded wash is more difficult to paint than a flat wash so if you've practiced painting a flat wash and you're beginning to understand how to do it then it's time to move on to the graded wash. I mentioned in the flat wash tutorial that the size of your brush is important. You don't want to use a little brush in a large area because you'll just end up with a streaky patchy mess. Well the same thing applies with a graded wash. Use the biggest brush you're comfortable with. I'm going to be using one of my mop brushes which holds a lot of paint and a lot of water. Alright, so let me show you one way of painting a graded wash. I've got some ash watercolour paper just taped to my board. I'm just going to put some washi tape on just to make some rectangles that I can paint in. Now I've got my board on an angle, it's propped up by some books. And I've got some alizarin crimson here, I'm just going to put it into this little palette and mix some water with it. Now just as I told you last week, you need to make sure you've got enough paint mixed up. You don't want to run out of paint halfway through your wash and then find that you have to mix up some more. So make sure you've got enough and with the graded wash you want the colour to be fairly dark because you want it dark at the top and then it will gradually get lighter. So you need it to be fairly dark to begin with. So I'm just going to have a look at that on a piece of scrap paper just to see what the colour is. Okay, so that's good. Okay, I'm going to use my mop brush. This is a number four Da Vinci mop brush. And I'm just going to put it straight into my puddle of paint here and load it up fully. And then I just start the way I did last week with the flat wash. Put the paint on the paper. I'm just going to pick up a little bit more. Another stroke. And now what I'm going to do instead of picking paint up, I'm going to dip my brush into my water container. And then I'll use that to run over the bottom of the previous brush stroke. Now I'll dip it into the water again. I'll do the same thing. Touch the bottom of the previous brush stroke. And now I'll do it again into the water. And then I touch the bottom of the previous brush stroke again, just with nice even horizontal brush strokes into the water again and again I just touch the bottom of the previous brush strokes and paint it horizontally across the paper and I just keep going until I get to the bottom of the paper into the water each time And hopefully it should just get lighter and lighter for you. 
there's less and less paint on the brush. So now I'm just going to wash the paint out of my brush, take off the excess moisture and use my brush like it's a sponge to sop up the excess line of moisture at the bottom of the paper here. I don't want that going back onto the paper because it will create a watercolour bloom as it dries. So I just get rid of that excess moisture there. And I'll just check the sides to make sure there's no excess moisture on the sides. So you can see it's darker at the top and it gets lighter as it works its way down to the bottom. Okay, so that's one way of painting a basic graded wash. I painted that one on dry paper. Now it says in my book here that graded washes must always be done on dry paper, otherwise the different strengths of colour will even out. I hate rules. Okay, I'm just going to divide the paper up again. And this time I'm going to put some water on the paper first. So I've just got some water on my mop brush. I'm just going to paint in this middle rectangle with some water. I need to make sure it's evenly covered with water. I don't want puddles of water sitting anywhere. So as soon as I get it covered, I'll show you how much water there is on the paper. So I even it out with my brush. And here it is here. You can see it's evenly covered and there's a glossy sheen on the surface. And there's no mounds of water sitting anywhere. I pick up the paint with my brush. I start at the top again, just like before. And now I'm just going to dip in the water like I did the last time. Just to take off that excess paint. And I'll keep going. You can see that that paint is dripping down the paper because I have my board on an angle. So with each few strokes, I go back into the water. And when I tap my brush on the side of the water bucket, I'm not taking all the water out of the brush. There's still a lot of water in it. I keep doing that all the way to the bottom. take the paint out of the brush, take off the excess moisture again, sop up that little puddle that's at the bottom and I'll let this one dry. So that wash I painted on the paper while it was tilted so that the paint ran down the paper a little. This time I want to try the same thing, but instead of having my board tilted, I'm going to make it flat on the table. I'm just going to take out those books that were propping up the board so that I can paint this one flat. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to wet it with water just like I did that previous one. Need good even coverage. And I want to make sure that there's no puddles of water sitting anywhere. So I even it out with my brush. And then I'll pick up the paint again and take it across the top just like the other ones. And now I'm going to Dip my brush in the water and keep going. Dip my brush in the water again. Make sure I touch the bottom of the last brush stroke. So I overlap them so I'm not going to get streaks. Dip my brush in the water again. Dip 
dip it in the water again. Back into the water until I get to the bottom. Okay, so I'm at the bottom, so now I'll just take out the excess moisture and paint that might be on my brush. I can use it to sop up that excess bead across the bottom if there is one. So that's that one, and that one needs to sit and dry. I'll show you all these washes when they're dry, but there's one more I want to try first. This time I want to paint flat on the table on the wet paper, but instead of dipping my brush in the water all the time, I'm just going to use the water that's on the paper so that I can see how that works. I've got a spare piece of Arsh hot press paper here. I've run out of the rough paper, but this will work okay. I'll just tape it to my board. Now I'm just going to wet it like I did the other paper. So I just need good, even coverage over it. Okay, so I'll just get some paint now. Just go across the paper like I have been. Now I won't dip my brush into the water. I'll see how I go without doing that. I'll just see if I can use the water that's on the paper. No, I think I am just going to dip it just once, just to take a little bit of paint off. Yeah, that's better. So all the way to the bottom. And then I'll just wipe off the excess from the sides. I'll just use a tissue. So now I'll just wait and see how that one dries. Okay, it's dry now, so I'll take the tape off. Now it's bled up a bit here under the tape, but that doesn't matter. So I'll keep all of these as samples and I'll just write on them how I painted them just so that I can keep them and refer to them in the future. It's good to see the different textured paper there too. You see how the wash sits differently on the different paper. So this one here was the first one that I painted. I painted that on the dry paper with the board at an angle and I dipped into the water. This one was the one that I just painted where I painted it on the hot press. It was the flat on the wet paper with only one dip of the brush. This one was the wet paper on an angle and I dipped into the water. You can see the wash, how it's gone down the sides there. And then this one was on the wet paper but I had the paper flat and I dipped into the water with each stroke. So this one is similar to this one, but it hasn't got these drips down the side because I painted it on the flat table. Okay, so that'll be good for me to keep. So yes, you can paint a graded wash on wet paper, but I will admit that of all the samples that I painted, the first one, the one I painted on the dry paper on an angle, I think dried the best. So that one is my favorite. Now I'll just show you a quick exercise that you can do to practice your washes just to make it a bit more interesting. So here I'm just doing the graded wash, doing it on the dry paper. So that needs to dry now. I'll do a flat wash down here. So that's giving me the practice of the flat wash. I'll take off the excess. So now I've dried it off, I'm just going to wet the sky area. I've got a little flat brush. This is Windsor Violet. It's painting onto the wet paper. 
Now I've got a bit of paint on the dry wash here so I'll just rub some more on to make it look like I meant to do it. Got a bit of paint grey there. I'll just rub that over the front a bit as well. A little bit darker with the paints grey now. So when that's dry, I come back in with my flat brush and I just paint some little random tree shapes. Just with the paints grey. I drop in some burnt sienna while it's damp. And then when it dries, I can use my liner brush just to paint a few tree trunks here and there. Just on the dry paper. Just varying the thickness of them, making them thicker in some places, thinner in others. Trying not to make them too uniform. bit of paint grey at the bottom there and then I just use a damp brush just to spread it out and I'll just put a bit more of that paint grey up into the foliage again just there so that's just a quick and easy way for you to make your wash practice a bit more interesting have a play around and see what you can come up with so now you know how to paint a graded wash practice different ways of doing it and see which method you prefer to use don't forget to use good quality cotton paper. Use the biggest brush you're comfortable with. Mix enough paint so you don't run out halfway through. Sop up your excess puddles of paint and have fun practicing. If you found this video helpful, make sure you give it a like and hit the subscribe button. I'll see you next week with a new tutorial. Last week I showed you how to paint a flat wash in watercolour. Today I want to chew, chew, I want to chew, I want to chew. Today I want to chew. I'll find it. I will find it. Uh-huh.